Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix and today we're going to be seeing how to get information out from the MVS or ZOS kernel or nucleus or operating system as you want to call it. Uh, before we get how to actually extract it we must first understand how the address space in MVS or ZOS is built as you can see here from this diagram you have a first line at 16 megabytes this is the 24-bit line then you have 131 bit which is the uh, uh, 2 gigabytes line and then you have uh, all the way up now the operating system is actually mapped within this address space um, in the very low part of the address space and this is what we must understand before we can understand how to get information out uh, once we're inside that address space which is mapped into every job that, that is running we have this operating system mapped in, into the virtual memory of each and every address space there is a way to access all the operating system information all the nucleus information by starting with the um, program save area um, or actually PSA I think stands for something else I will have to look it up um, but first at location 10 we can always access in the very low memory we can always access PSA 10 bytes down from the PSA, we have a pointer to the CVT, the common vector table, which is kind of the mother of all tables within the operating system within within MVS or ZOS. Um, within the CVT, uh, eight C bytes down, there is a pointer to the extended common vector table, as you can see here, on the, in the third diagram down. And from there, um, you can then access, for instance, as just one of hundreds of examples, the initialization parameter area, which where you find all the parameters which pertain to the IPL of the machine. Um, and today we're going to be looking how to get out the device name for which we IPL from, as well as the um, the location, the volume serial where we can find the master catalog, as an example. But what's important to understand is that from within the CVT, we can access all other tables which we're allowed to read. Uh, obviously, to write into the table, we have to have operating system privilege, and the danger here to ruin things is, of course, very big. Um, so only APF authorized um, address spaces can write back into those tables. But we can access a lot of information by just, uh, by just um, uh, accessing the CVT program and I'm going to be doing this in very fast motion so that um, uh, we don't have to look at the tedious typing and correcting of typos. We're going to go through this in a very quick manner and hopefully uh, we can all learn something. So let's get started here with a brand new empty member. I'm connected here to a ZOS uh, uh, 10 box that was granted to me in India, I think, or ZOS 9, I'm not sure. Uh, it doesn't really matter because all this is compatible backwards to MVS as well as forwards, um, of course, to uh, current uh, ZOS versions such as 2.1, 2.3. Very little has changed in the stuff that we're doing here. Obviously, there's a lot of new tables with newer operating systems, but we're going to be doing stuff that's relevant to both MVS and ZOS. So we're going to be watching here as I um, program this. Uh, first, of course, always start with the JCL. I could have taken a template, but I just wanted to do this all from scratch and so uh, we're going to be uh, start writing the JCL here as well and we call a procedure for um, uh, compile link and go we're going to execute this job immediately important here is that uh, we have uh, I'm going to have a report as you can see here uh, uh, sysout data set which actually just goes to printer I'll make a record format FBA and uh, 133 because it makes for a nicer looking output. I may use snap dump. Snap is a way to force the kernel, to force a problem, a, a, a program to issue a, like a light dump. So you can look at register contents, etc. Very useful in, uh, in assembler programming. So let's go and run this through and I will only leave comments uh, where comments are required so that you can focus on watching this and listening hopefully to cool music uh, if you if you bear with me
for now we'll leave print gen on so that all the macros will be expanded in the assembly output uh, later on it's always better to for me it's I, I like to make it no gen so that the output from the assembler is a little shorter we'll make this um, this uh, program addressing mode 31 bit so we can address uh, up to 31 bits of memory but we'll make it a residency mode 24 bit so we'll be below the 16 megabytes line we could also make this I guess uh, R mode 31 no reason but um, this I'll go with 24 bit and then I have a very old style here uh, you could call this basic assembler language BAL uh, like opening of a program where we save the call as registers into a save area and establish our own addressability there's much uh, fancier ways to do it but this also this is, that has the advantage that it's also backward compatible with very old assemblers and will also run uh, on our beloved uh, MVS 3.8 um, so that's why I'm keeping it very simple and I try to put in as many comments as possible uh, you should always do that in assembler because uh, that's what makes assembly more readable uh, right now, as you can see here, this is the save area where we save the registers. It's 18 full words. A full word here obviously is 32-bit. And what I'm doing here right off the bat is whenever my programming style is whenever I use something in a program, I try to build it so that um, I don't forget stuff. But we will see later in this video that I did forget some stuff anyway. Uh, this is the register equate so that I can use R13 instead of just 13 makes the code more readable. And uh, it's right after that we end the program. I like to save early and often because I don't like to lose work. Especially for a mainframe I have no, no idea what it's running on. And so next to saving and often I will also download through the um, terminal transfer capability a copy onto my desktop. Um, so once we got the register equates done, we then open the report uh, printout data set. Uh, obviously with the assembly program, it doesn't know if it goes to a real data set or to a printer. It's all the same. And then I put out title lines here, which I, of course now I'm going to go and create just to put something sensible in the output. We'll see that I'll make several errors here and I'm sure that the viewers here, we have some gurus among our viewers in this channel, in our community here, and uh, they will spot lots of errors I made. And um, obviously I didn't spot them when I wrote this down all in one go. I wrote this all down in one go and uh, I did spot them afterwards in the debugging phase uh, once I started to. Uh, eliminate bugs by running the program and you see there's a lot of stupid mistakes I made um, so um, IBM has a very extensive even though not the most user-friendly reference system here so we want to look up how to map the CVT so it's uh, time to look up how those areas are called and there is macros within uh, MVS and ZOS to map have the, the those macros go and map all the required data uh, areas all the fields uh, and make them easily accessible to us and so first I uh, map the CVT which is the start of everything then later then we need to find within CVT as we saw in the opening diagram we need to find the field that points to the extended CVT table and so we get there uh, in a second uh, but first of all let's have the extended CVT table mapped here as well and finally we need the IPA what I'm doing here is I'm looking up what is the name of the initialization parameter area of table um, you can find almost everything you need sometimes a little tedious but you'll see that I'll find there I find it so in this case I didn't know what exactly it's called but I saw that it's always IHA and so I assumed it's going to be IHA IPA because the other one above is IHA ECVT and so we map that and that is done save early and often mm -hmm. 
Now we have, once we know it's mapped, we will be able to start accessing those fields because they're mapped now into our assembler program. So first we load into register one, pointer to the CVT table. Then we load into register one, the field that points to the CVT. And we can do that by removing from the entry address of the CVT the uh, field address of uh, of the pointer. So this gives us the, the this gives us the pointer itself off of register one, obviously. And now from there we can swing over to the IPA. I just have to look up the field name. done. Always try to keep the code tidy. So now we've, within the IPA we find the fields that we're looking for, which is the device name from whence we IPL'd, as well as the volume serial where the master catalog resides. As you can see here, there's hundreds of fields that are very, very interesting. And so this is how things like IMON, or if you remember Omegamon, which was later acquired, acquired by IBM, report all those fields. Uh, they're very easily mappable. It's just almost like writing accounting software. It's just work. There's, there's, there's no rocket science in this. So now we prepare two buffers into which we can copy the name of these two parameters we're looking. We know from looking at the left under at the table here in the IBM website that they're all characters, so there's no numbers, which makes sense. A volume serial is a character field, and the device name is treated as a character field for the most part. And what we're doing here now is something which I saw somewhere else, I don't remember where I've seen it. But first we create the, as you see, the outline one, that's a line that's supposed to go into the printer. But then right below, we actually map a, a field called dev for device, which maps um, a certain number of positions down into that above line. So that when we then print out the above line, it will actually automatically contain the device number where the X's are. Uh, there's, we could also work with uh, or immediate, that's another way to do it in assembler. But this works just as fine and it's easy to understand for most people. And the second line, the volume, volume serial, we do the same thing. We just have to count how many uh, bytes from the beginning of this st string, where the X's are and how many of there are. Volume serials, of course, are six bytes. So now we do actual report writing which is very very simple we move into dev um, which again is mapped into outline one the this field which contains the IPL device I don't know what it is here but we'll see when we run this program and then into cat we um, copy the volume serial of the device on which the master catalog for this system we're running on resides when you can just copy them, cut and paste very easily. It's one of the nice things about this terminal emulator. It's very system programmer friendly. So now we write um, the the uh, these lines into our report, and obviously there is a bug in here which we will solve later. Now we start to tidy up and return. We write to the operator that we finished uh, printing. This is uh, just a little debugging help. I put this sometimes early on into when I write a program so that I know how far down uh, the program has executed before it abandoned. And then later on I removed all those, all those the, the WTO. WTO obviously stands for write to operator. You can have write to operator reply WTO R if you expect a reply back. But um, in this case, we just continue. Now reload the registers for the caller where we saved them. First, we have to find the area, then we'll reload the registers. 
and then we return with a condition code of zero. RC equals zero means condition code zero. The literal uh, pool is now uh, being pointed to here, below here. And that's pretty much the whole program. Uh, very, very simple, as you can see. Now we could go and get hundreds of uh, fields um, just in the first two tables or three tables, that's probably thousands. And within the nucleus, there is hundreds or probably thousands of tables. So there's, there's tens of thousands of fields that are very interesting. And that's what those products like Omegamon or Imon do. They go and read those fields and report them in an organized way. So I switch here between JCL, um, syntax highlighting and assembly, syntax highlighting to spot errors. And now at this point, I ask myself, how do we actually address those fields? Um, because they're outside um, the addressability of this program. And at this point, I wasn't too sure what would work. And I was, I was thinking either we would have to point off the CVT table, have a, a base register for the CVT table or for the IPA, I wasn't sure. And I ended up using, I guess, the wrong one. And then later while we debug, I fixed that later. Using is a, a way to tell the assembler. So this doesn't actually go into the code. This is just a way to tell the assembler how to build the addresses when it uh, produces machine code. And as we know, CVT, as I, I, I know now, but we'll see later, CVT was the wrong map to base off on. So that's it. Uh, let's give this a try and see what happens. Return code 20 is one of the highest return codes I've had in years. So let's see what's wrong here. So I'm able to read the source code. We'll see in a second why. This is the first time I've encountered this error, and that's because I had already put the termination into it. We go back and we'll see, still have a similar problem. So why is that? So we find out that the termination wasn't really the problem. There's something else that is the problem with the sysn. It's complaining about the sysn. Let's look up this assembler, high level assembler error. Well, tell us there's something wrong with the formatting of the sysn. Either the disk or the operating, something is very wrong. Since I know the system to be stable, must be something else. And that's it. I wrote sysn, where it should of course say syslib, where I point to the maclib, the macro library, and the modgen libraries. So once we fix that, it should run better. Okay, so now at least it found the source code. Let's delete the other one so we can fill up the, the spool. There's a DD missing for something. DD stands, of course, for data definition. And now we found out there is no DCB for this report data set. How does how is the assembly supposed to know how do how is the machine supposed to know which uh, DD we're referring to? So we have to put in a DCB here, report, and then DCB, and that's what I did. It's a macro that tells the system how to connect to the data set and how to treat it. So there is always three parts to every data set. What the program thinks, it, the DCB of the program, the JCL, and of course what the catalog knows about it. And the three have to be correct or an error is going to happen. Notice the plus at the end of this line, which extends the line to the next line. And then the ISPF editor here is telling me that we're not indenting the next line properly. Okay. That's very nice. I don't remember the ISPF doing this in the 80s when I last used ISPF before. Starting to use it again this year. Okay. 
Okay, it abandoned. But that's a good abend. Um, should be able to find. Invalid instruction means that we're probably executing data instead of, uh, of uh, code. And that's because we run off the end of something. So let's see what it is. Oh, we're not addressing something correctly. So I guess the load that we have for the, yeah, so those lines of course are, are named wrong, but that's not the problem. And just execute again to have a cleaner assembly output. Let's go see what, what the matter is with this. There's something we're not addressing right. And when we do the load, on this field, that's when we have the 0c1 because the load doesn't doesn't uh, get executed. And so here it is, it's syslib, obviously, with an S. And now we still have a problem. And that's because we have an addressing problem. We cannot address those fields correctly. Uh, and I guess when I said the using, the using was probably wrong. So let's find a way, let's write IPA. And if we write IPA, we should be able now to address all the fields. Submitted, bingo. It compiled correctly and it ran it with some issues, but at least it ran it now. And we can see there's a continuation statement there, it wasn't correct, but that's just a warning that didn't stop it. And that's why we have a non-zero return code. But these are all the fields, as you can see, there's hundreds of fields which we could read from now, all very pertinent information. And you need to go out and read the manuals to see if you have a specific field that you need, such as a user ID or something, it's always there. The IPA, of course, only concerns stuff relating to IPL. There's going to be PCB, there's tons of control blocks. So we got information, but it's all, uh, the formatting is awfully wrong. Something's very wrong with the formatting here, but it did obtain the fields. So let's see what it could be. First, let's uh, get rid of the warning here. So that should be at position 12. And let's go find the problem. So the problem is here somewhere with the formatting. It's writing this in the right place. And we need to count the bytes here correctly. But something's very wrong here. So we have, let's look at the columns. Volumes. So still something wrong. We need to be able to find the problem here. Just looking at these two equates, something's very wrong with the equates. Let's make it a little simpler to count. We have now the columns, numbers above, so we can count easily. And so the numbers, we fix that. And now we need to fix this. So let's make the string here a little shorter. The submit is taking its time, but here it is. Let's delete the old stuff. Still something wrong. Be. 
counting again, that seems correct. Counting here again. Let's submit again. Very often it's just little things that take the most time when you write assembler because you need to count bytes and and so time sometimes tiny little problems sneak in and they take very long to solve. And here the system is a little slow over in India, but I'm not complaining. I'm very thankful to the gentleman. Okay, how much longer is this going to take? Okay, done. Yeah, still no cigar. Let's format the code here a little nicer. I sometimes make me a little nervous if the code is not formatted properly. Of course, we have the problem up here that the outlines should be mentioned, not the equates. Makes perfect sense. Let's run it again. So the output. Okay, so now we got the IPL device formatted properly. We just need to shift it one to the left. Okay. Let's run it again, and now the IPL device should come up perfectly. Okay. Yes, so we got the IPL device. Let's fix now the bottom string. Let's just make sure we got the proper field, and it's six bytes. Yeah, so let's make the string a little simpler. Six X's, that is correct. Let's count again. Maybe if we make it longer. Nope. Still no luck. There must be something we're missing. So sometimes it's it helps to have a very sharp eye for little details. Which I used to have, but I find like in recent years I sometimes don't pay as much attention to small details anymore. And then assembler, that's that just wastes a lot of time. I'll let you watch and I'll try to see. I know by now what was wrong. Um, I think the better program. Okay, I have to uh, restart the terminal here. So let's go back here. Let's look at what we have. And let's go look at the latest output. It's the terminal. I just went through fine bottom. Yeah, um, I cannot figure this out. But we got the information. This is 9sys1 Sys is the catalog device. And it's writing at the beginning of the line and not at the end. Because these are the six X's that we have here. And so outline. Oh, so stupid of me. Okay, we got it fixed. Um, so sorry, folks. It's just sometimes I'm a little tired. It's early in the morning. I've been programming now since what? Since five. Um, and let's go check it out. Bottom. Yes. So we got this figured out. So this is the um, master catalog device, and we got the IPL device. So we could get all these fields here, and thousands of fields, and. There is some old books about this stuff and I wanted to acquire one from Amazon, but there's thousands and thousands of uh, useful fields with information here. And, um, and then this is just for IPL. We could also access things like, for instance, the, uh, the user logged in by going through uh, something called uh, the, uh, what is it called, the PSCB. So um, it's just, it's just, this is just one way to 
show you how easy it is to connect to that information. You should do your own exploration. You can use my program. I'll put it in. Uh, I'll put it on uh, on my uh, GitHub repository, and that will link uh, to the repository in the description below this video. If you have any comments, uh, please join me on Discord. I'm there answering uh, messages and chatting with people all day long. And also we have our Facebook page uh, and that will link to the Discord channel and to the Facebook page in the description below this video as well. Thank you very much. Uh, please consider subscribing to the Moshex Mainframe channel. And uh, if you like this particular video, please press on the thumbs up button. Thank you very much and goodbye.